Um, okay, so next we have Frank Cohen, who is the uh, founder of Push to Test. He's going to be talking about uh, Selenium Record playback using the Test Maker Object Designer. So I will start your timer. Just keep standing in front of your computer. As soon okay. as you start. Is that okay if I sit? Uh, it's better if you stand. So if you okay. So uh, hello, everybody. My 10 minutes of fame, right? Um, so I'm the founder and CEO at, at push to test uh, We make an open source test solution that integrates Selenium and then enables our customers and our community to repurpose those functional tests to be load and performance tests as well as production monitors. Most of the customers that are buying the enterprise version of our open source test tool have already adopted agile processes <coughs> um, within their software development team. But they've always forgotten about load and performance testing. So they wind up with a big library of Selenium tests that work great as functional tests, but um, then they can't go anywhere. They have to tend to rewrite them uh, to be load and performance tests. So what we do is make it easy for them to do that kind of migration and repurpose those tests. Um, and these customers are like Best Buy and Pepsi. They're all big, big organizations. So uh, you know, great, great going Selenium that you've created a marketplace for us. Um, that, that's my appreciation. Um, one of the things that I've noticed, though, is that uh, as the software development community, we're, we're all kind of like hiring lots of engineers to really try and automate these applications in a way that makes them testable. And it, it's kind of like being the mouse in the, you know, in the, in the little uh, 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 garden who's trying to spin his wheel as fast as he can. Eventually, the mouse gets tired, and so do we as testers. Um, the problem goes back about 15 years ago when Sun blew it with the Java Business Integration uh, APIs. There's no way for the developers to kind of represent programmatically what their program is supposed to do. So it's up to us as developers to kind of make these rough approximations with Selenium of what the application is supposed to do and, and to drive the app, and it's never precise. Um, what's worse is that the proprietary test tool vendors for the last 15 years or so, and I'm thinking specifically about HP's Mercury product set, you know, convinced all of the business managers out there that record and playback was the way to go. Um, so you have these test tools like QTP that um, they're the best that money can buy, but they still fall short of being able to really do automation because they're also just trying to approximate what the application is doing. Um, there have been great innovations of late, like page objects within the Selenium community to try and bring some sanity back to this. But there's still this, this $2 billion behemoth that's making this promise still that if you just believe in record and playback, that everything will be fine. Um, so what I find is weird about the Selenium uh, community is that you're, the entry point to Selenium says use Selenium IDE. Right? And then, uh, you know, let's talk about object-oriented test, test script development. Um, so it's not only the proprietary test tool vendors have kind of sold a bill of goods to, uh, uh, to the business managers. It's also the Selenium project itself who's doing itself no favor by saying that record and playback in Selenium IDE is a, a good thing. I don't think it is. So what you'll find on the push-to-test site is not only test tools that do record and playback, but also support an object-oriented approach of building test scripts. And uh, that's why I've reached out to people like Adam Gucher to, to record like uh, webinars on, on page objects, it's because I see this as just being a continuum, um, just some sort of solution that we can all approach uh, testing in a more reliable, maintainable way over time. The thing that I have noticed, though, is that there are a whole bunch of testers that will never get into uh, coding. Um, and so for them, we've developed a tool called the Test Maker Object Designer. I'm figuring that there's like a tipping point at some point between where record and playback makes sense and then when you should tip over into uh, coding. Um, and so what I'm trying to do with the designer is to make that tipping point a little bit further away for the tester who doesn't know how to code. Uh, does that make sense? In term okay. So what we've developed is a... Um, a tool itself that, that ships as part of the test maker um, system. So I can create a new functional test here and then represent a use case by um, de defining the different steps of the test. The test type itself could be any type of test. So we have script runners for Selenium and Sahi for writing unit tests in Java or PHP or Ruby. Um, uh, we also support uh, SOAP UI and uh, well, even the, the new HAR, the HTTP archive format. You can turn HAR files into, into tests. 
Um, so what happens is if I had a Selenium script already, um, I could run it within Selenium RC by just browsing out to where the, the script is. I'm just going to pick any old file here. And then I can choose which browser I want to run this in. But what I could also do is switch over to using HTML unit as the browser. Once I've done this, then under the test nodes um, uh, tab here, I can add different nodes. These are essentially the, the runners. It's kind of like we're using Selenium Grid, but, but we're not. We're using the test maker system instead. These test nodes then run the scripts according to um, this test use case. And the use case could have multiple different steps to it. So I could run a Selenium script once and then run a JavaScript or a Java uh, class uh, next. So I can kind of mix and match depending on what would be best for my test. Um, so the designer itself is this tool um, that lets you record and play back tests, and it does so in a variety of different browsers. So we support, uh, I didn't install it on, on my Mac here, but uh, we support recording in IE, recording in any of the WebKit browsers, so like uh, Safari, Chrome, uh, um, uh, and uh, we also support Opera. So when you, when you go to tell it to record a test, it is going to um, bring up the... Uh, uh, the browser that you choose. Let me just type this. And at this point, it's using a, a network proxy on the local machine to see the traffic that's going back and forth to the um, to the application. Uh, let's see. I wonder if what we set up for the previous presenters thing is keeping me from doing this. So, okay, well. Um, the idea of the designer is that you can record and play back these test scripts um, from a variety of different browsers. And let me just open one uh, that works here for uh, web testing. This is a uh, designer script that I created before. Okay, and there it is. Um, the, uh, uh, the, the script itself is... Um, uh, can be in a variety of different languages. Um, it supports, uh, out of the box, uh, Selenium 1, uh, Sahi, as well as Flex. Um, we're supporting the Flex automation APIs from Adobe, so you can do uh, neat recording of hybrid applications. You know, those are apps that might have uh, a bunch of Ajax components, but also a bunch of Flex components embedded within. Um, so the, the, the neat thing about the, uh, the designer is that it's multi-protocol. So like here is a, a test script that I wrote um, using the Sahi language, but if I wanted to switch over to Selenium, um, that's how hard it is. And I can go back and forth depending on which language is more appropriate for me. Um, we wrote it in this way with the anticipation of supporting Selenium 2, so you'd be able to switch from Selenium 1.0 to Selenium 2 um, immediately. The other thing that we did is to make it so that um, you can do looping and branching and conditional execution within this environment. So I can add uh, while statements. Um, I can do go to if. Uh, I can set um, uh, breakpoints, and uh, uh, and all of this is like integrated into an environment that doesn't require me to code. Um, so for the QTP user out there, this looks very familiar for them. Um, the other thing that we did is to data enable this. So if I click over here on the data tab, you can browse out to the local file system, and then you can select the different data uh, elements that you want to insert into your test. So by doing a drag and drop operation like that, we've now data enabled the test. So a lot of times you'll be um, uh, working with uh, uh, Ajax apps where you want to call its APIs directly. Um, the thing that I didn't show you is being able to repurpose this to be a load test and a, and a, uh, a performance monitor. That's available uh, if you wanted to take a look at our screencasts or the webinars that are coming up. Like next week is the open source test workshop that we host. Uh, all of these are, are free events. And then push to test is there available to provide uh, professional services and consulting, and that's, that's how we make our money. Uh, we've been profitable for two years now. We're at 14 people. Uh, full-time, and we're hiring six more. So uh, um, so it seems to be working. And uh, I thank you, Ashley, and thank you uh, uh, for, for having me here.